Sometimes we forget why we're here. It's easy to fall off track. These help us remember. These battle scars don't look like the fate. Don't look like the ever gone away. They ain't never gonna change. These battles. Growing up, I had a dream, something no one else could see. Tell me what it means when your faith is falling beneath your knees and you can't breathe. Everything you see reminds you of what you're not or something you won't be. You gotta take what you're given, that's how we live it. Don't be mad at the system, it's simply how we've existed. I hear a lot of people talking like they politicians and choose to be an accountant because it's safe in a business. Not because they wanna do it, just because they heard it pays. And who the fuck wants to be poor knowing that's how we've been raised? Society is getting heavy, I can feel the weight. The pressure of success is like a hundred million pounds of shame and that's the reason i'm staying up late trying to find a way to escape the stereotypes this day and age is making me feel like the only way i'll be happy is getting signed to a label and making money through rapping i want to share my emotion because this world is attacking the very principle of life that lets the people be happy if you don't have a reason to breathe why even live these battles cause our impressions of every world is at the very principle of life That reached a hundred million people I tell them there's a reason that we're all created equal Cause some decide to be great And some decide a sequel to an average person's life Is simply what they want to be So you make your decision All I know is what I'm given Won't define the life I lead Or the way I dwell in existence I've seen a greater image on the walls of where I'm living And the words twisted and scripted Remind me of something written Faith is a gift that is given down to the people If one believes it, one receives it It's given if it is needed Don't ever think you're trapped in a life that you never want Wanted. Your options are infinite, that's some mathematical logic I'm not saying I'm a prophet, I'm speaking for what it's worth These lyrics define my prayers and these battles cause I'm a church Not saying I'm a prophet, I'm speaking for what it's worth These lyrics define my prayers, these battles cause I'm a church Well, hello, everyone. I think I'm finally figuring out this YouTube thing. Look, uh, maybe not. Look, because I'm my, I'm hiding my flame. <laughs> I'm hiding. Don't put your flame under a bushel. Okay, just taking a look at the chats to acknowledge who's here. We're gonna get right into it. I have a feeling the show could be long. Maybe not. I mean, the 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 topic's not complicated. It all depends upon comments, and I have to record my radio shade, radio shay my radio show today and I think whew, I don't know if I'm going to step in it or not but has that ever stopped me before I think I'm going to talk about Miss Whoopi Goldberg this time even though I know that's a minefield uh, but the very fact that I hesitated and said wait do I want to do that I might get in trouble that's when the thing in my mind said, you know what? This is freaking ridiculous. The self-censorship we do where we're scared to talk about a topic because we might say the wrong thing is what is freaking wrong with this country. We can't, ha like, never mind. I'll save it for my show. I'll save it for my show. But I do think I'm going to be talking about Whoopi Goldberg um, on my radio show this weekend. Let's uh, let the audience build for this one uh, because Ms. DeSisto who I know is probably watching or will be watching later, my highest viewed shows are the ones on libertarian drama. If I really cared about views, that is all I would do. My, my love, the thing I started this channel for, was history, and that will always be the main focus of my channel. Even though when I do the LP drama, whew, the views, the views uh, sh uh, shoot up. Who? You say YouTube looks blurry. It looks good on my end on my camera. I have YouTube up. Let me see. 
YouTube does not look blurry on my end. I am, you, do we want to get meta here? But I don't like the color. The color is kind of blue tinged. Let's get really meta. No, I don't want to share that screen. I want to share this screen. Look how meta we are. So I am talking to you while I am watching YouTube while I'm talking to you. This is freaking meta. And now that I'm looking at it on this screen, it doesn't look blue tinged. So that means my other monitor has a blue tinge to it. And oh my God, world's just imploded with me watching you, commenting on me, watching me on YouTube while I'm watching it all. My mind is blown. <laughs> um, I do keep YouTube up in the background too because that's the only place I can moderate comments. The only kind of comments, as you all know, that I moderate are like the spam bots or somebody who's like doxing. I don't really moderate anything else because I don't care if somebody comes and says like hateful stuff because it drives engagement and engagement makes me money because I'm such a YouTube whore. All right. Let's, um, let me say hi to everyone who's here. Then I'll do a little bit of my whoring and then we will talk about to call the LNC a dumpster fire is an insult to very nice dumpster fires everywhere. I mean, there's some very respectable, I mean, they are what they are. They don't put on airs and try to see, that's what I respect about actual dumpster fires. They go, hey, I'm a dumpster fire. Fuck you. Oh, I probably just ruined my monetization. But the LNC puts on snobby airs and holds their little pinkies out while they drink their tea when all they are is a dumpster fire. You know, it's like a good shit post. I can appreciate and savor the aroma of a good shit post. But when you've got a shit poster who thinks they're the next Shakespeare or something, that's what's insufferable. And that is why the, <laughs> the LNC is insufferable. It's a pile of shit that thinks it smells like a filet mignon. All right. So let me uh, go say hi to everyone who's here. David Davis. Hola, and I'm here apparently in chat. So, hey, how are you doing? Yeah, pink haired troublemaker. Um, H. Reardon, um, Fidalgo Files, um, Libertarians Against Lynching, and yeah, and a Facebook user. Listen, Facebook user, if you, because <laughs> I don't know your name because you haven't connected Restream to Facebook, there's a whole thing on how to do that. I should post it again. Um, Bren the Wizard, Dave McConnell. And uh, Sean Goward, uh, K pasta? What pasta? The copy pasta? I don't know of what pasta you speak. Oh boy, where do we even start? Oh, I'm going to start with the whoring. That's right. Because I probably blew my monetization within the first few minutes, all super chats, <laughs> all super chats matter. Um, I'm trying to think of a Whoopi Goldberg joke I can slip in here, but I can't even think of anything that would be as stupid as what she said. It's okay. Let me try to think of something as equally stupid as Whoopi Goldberg. Super chats aren't about money. <laughs> They're about the kindness of one human being to another. No bitches. It's about the money. <laughs> It's about the money. I need it for my campaign. And uh, look what I have here. I wanted to show you guys. This is from Tucson, Arizona. I've been picking up shot glasses on my travels with some Grand Marnier. And I do have the most uh, refined of all drinks, Diet Mountain Dew. And I'm doing some Irish appropriation here with some shamrocks. <laughs> And what other whoring can I do? I think that's it. Get your Reno Reset shirts at tinyurl.com forward slash pink flame merch. And we're doing the February whoring now. Yes, I am $30 away per month from my February goal, which was my January goal, which I just sucked at even trying to push. So you could help make a dream come true. Um, yeah, today... <laughs> 
Today at work, I put a pink cover sheet on a binder and got in trouble for it. <laughs> I don't know if this is going to work out. Oh, my God. Okay. Okay, 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 okay. Um, that's it, I guess. Encouraging the Super Chats. Encouraging you to become a patron. What other whoring can I do? I've got my Amazon wish list. It's all down there. It's all down there. Send me some uh, crypto. I'd love some crypto, some doge. I'm, I'm even good with that. Um, you know, yeah. Send me some crypto. I'd really love it. Now let's get going. So what's going on? I need to set the story. And these kinds of shows are definitely participatory shows. Thank you, Stephen Ecker. Oh, my God. You are like one of my most generous listeners. I'm so super appreciative. And uh, yes, to, to monetization, to capitalism. Yay. And can we dedicate this super chat to Tara, to Tara DeSisto? <laughs> All super chats tonight. I'm going to monetize the freaking hate. All super chats tonight are dedicated to Miss Tara DeSisto. Thank you, Miss DeSisto, for helping my campaign because nobody watches my show. So it means nobody is giving me money because I'm such a clown. Oh, at least I'm a famous clown. <laughs> what was that meme I posted? It said, who is this clown? It said, who is this clown is the worst insult ever. Because not only are they calling you a clown, they're, not, they're saying you're not even a famous clown. <laughs> I loved that. I just loved the hell out of that. So let's do the backdrop here. I might forget something. I just got off of work. So... If I am forgetting something, you guys need to let me know. And I did just pull my hair out of the hair tie, which is why it's like all kind of whoop, you know, and like Wendy's little curl. So we all know what happened <laughs> with the LNC meeting regarding the 47 expelled members from the Libertarian Party of Massachusetts. Actually, it's the Libertarian Association of Massachusetts. That's why we call them. It's the, the llama drama. We are dealing further with the llama drama. And we all saw just what an abortion of a meeting that was, right? Right, we did. We all saw that. I wasn't dreaming it. Okay, good. I wouldn't call it a dream. I'd call it a nightmare. So Joshua, who's been, I don't care what you think of Joshua. I think Joshua probably doesn't care what you think of Joshua either. He's been the goat, like the goat goat. Like, meh, goat. Why was that a sheep? Goats make that sound too. He's been the goat. I know it doesn't really stand for the animal, but go with me here, okay? Just go with me. He's been the goat. So he said, he did a motion for another meeting after, that's true, we've never heard of an alpaca drama. Llama, come up with a new name. Oh, we got Doc Sexy. I'm like a wow, wow. See, I got the button down pat now. I'm learning to be a YouTuber. Look, I got another hair tie. These hair ties are surrounding me. Now, where was I? Oh, okay. So he was the GOAT and he moved to have another meeting on February 6th because the meeting they had was to just discuss things. Okay. I don't agree, but okay. And he said he would give proper notice. He or someone else would give proper notice of motions to be heard on February 6th. And they did give proper notice of motions to be heard on February 6th. And I knew, and I don't have those motions in front of me, damn it. I think Rich Bowen made them. Let me see if I, if I can find them really quick. Because those were good motions. And I have a lot of things prepared, but I did not have the motions that Rich Bowen gave notice of. So let me just see if I can see notice. Right here. No. Is it? No, that's not it. That's for platform committee. Let I I get way too many emails. But anyway, it was it was some good motions that would basically say that the Libertarian National Committee would I'm just looking here, new link, new link. Nope, I'm not finding it. 
Oh, maybe I'm not going back far enough. One second. Just give me one second. Do you remember what date? God, I sent too many freaking emails. I bet you if I just looked up the LNC email... Here it is, February 6th LNC meeting. So here's what was supposed to be heard at the February meeting. He gave notice on January 28th. Whereas, and I should probably just pull this up so we can read along, right? It's not pulled up, is it? No, it's not. I need more than two screens. I need three screens. But let's, nope, that's pulling up the wrong screen. I want to pull up my primary display. Here we go. Okay, so here was the notice. Make sure none of my tabs are my lesbian midget porn. Good, that's not up there. All righty. Whereas the Libertarian National Committee, LNC, otherwise known as, well, nope, we're not going to insult dumpster fires, conducted a meeting on January 23rd. Is that what we called it? Are we calling what happened on January 23rd meetings now? I'm not so sure that's what I would call it. To gain information. Is that what we call it? <laughs> and hear from multiple parties. Objection! Speculative! <laughs> Speculative! <laughs> oh, God bless you. Bless your heart, Dan Daniel Fishman. From multiple parties in the dispute in the affiliate in Massachusetts and whereas 46, it's either 46 or 47, the number keeps jump, jumping around. I don't know what it is. I think it's 47, but, but okay. 40 something members of the Libertarian Party of Massachusetts, Lama exercised their right to petition for a special convention of the members of Lama and whereas on January 10th, 2022, the Lama State Committee expelled every member who signed the petition. Right then, every Libertarian in the party should be puking, but they're not because everyone is looking at this just with, they're not looking at it principle. I don't want to say everyone. A lot of people are just not looking at this with principles because if, if she was on the other foot, George Phillies and all these other people, like if your position changes depending upon like who's involved, whether you're friends of yours, you know, not based upon foundational principles. You're just simply not a principled person. And we're learning a lot of people are not principled people. All right. So they expelled every member who signed the petition. And whereas the expelled members, along with an invitation to all state members, remain committed to holding a special convention. And they still do remain committed as far as I know. I don't speak for them, but as far as I know, whereas the expelled members forwarded a petition to the LNC for relief on January 11th, 2022, and whereas the LNC has agreed to meet on February 6th, 2022, consider to motions for remedies. All right. I just love parliamentary speak. I'm going to need a cigarette after reading this. Uh, or Doc Sexy, uh, no, you're not one of my moderators, are you? I should make you a moderator. You're here all the time. Because we need to, like, get rid of these spammers who do these weird links. Um, so, move that the LNC encourage... Did I lose? Hold on. Yeah, no, I'm still good. Okay. Move that the LNC encourage... It should be encourages, right? Encourage... LNC encourages, yeah, it should be encourages members of the Lama State Committee who voted to expel members to rescind the expulsion. Uh, I should have looked at this more carefully. They did send it to me ahead of time. You don't have to be, anyone can move to rescind. You don't have to be on the quote unquote winning side to move to rescind. I didn't catch that. But it's better to have somebody who was on the winning side because, you know, obviously the people who are against it are still against it. Um, to move that the LNC acknowledge the legitimacy of the petition for a special convention and encourage members of the Lama State Committee to adhere to the petition request and hold the requested special convention. Number three, move that the LNC, in the event the Lama State Committee refuses to abide by the recommendations above, provide contact information for every Massachusetts national member and resident libertarian in its position to a designee of the petitioners to provide notice via email 
for the special convention. Before we move to number four, I need to correct some ignorance of Beth Vest. Say it isn't so. Say Beth Vest didn't say something ignorant. She never does that. So Beth Vest says on the LNC list, I regret even more that my state is participating in the CRM if they're just going to give all the data away. Beth, Massachusetts data is not in the CRM. Your comment had absolutely fucking nothing to do with anything. You just like to hear yourself speak because you just got a lawyer's degree and you think you know fucking everything. I know that because I've been working with lawyers for two decades. This has absolutely nothing to do with the CRM or the motion would have mentioned the CRM. Massachusetts is preparing to be on the CRM, but they are not yet on the CRM. I would hope as an LNC member, you would know that before shooting off your mouth. Continuing. Number four. Move that the LNC, following the special convention, recognize the results of elections by the Massachusetts members in attendance. Number five, move that the LNC, in the event the Lama State Committee refuses to abide by the recommendations above, recommend to its successor to immediately take up consideration of the issues surrounding the expulsion. It is 47 here. We gained a member. I think there was a typo earlier. As soon as practicable. I love the word practicable. It's different than practical. Do you guys know the difference between practical and practicable? I love it. I love those two words. Anyway, um, after the adjournment of the 2022 National Convention. All right. So what does this say in English (laughs) rather than in Roberts? A, please just stop the bullshit and rescind the expulsion so we could all just go back to what we were doing before, which was ignoring the COVID regime. Can we please just do that? Um, number two, uh, the motion is that the members followed the bylaws and us honoring the bylaws of an affiliate is not interfering in the autonomy of an affiliate. It's the exact opposite of interfering in the autonomy of an affiliate. So saying we acknowledge the legitimacy of the petition for a special convention and encourage the state committee to follow their own bylaws and hold the special convention. Now, three is a bit controversial because it says, see, the, the state committee really has a dirty little game playing here. They're like, no, we're just going to throw you out and we're not going to let you have your convention and we're going to make sure you can't have your convention because we're not going to give you the information you need to contact the people who would come to the convention. This is what is really, really so evil here. And you can't vote to remove us at the next state convention because we threw you out of the party so you don't get a vote next time. Neener, neener, neener. That's a, this is what the problem is here. For those of you who think it's none of your business, which to me is just absolutely vile. The turn the other wayism in this party. So this is the most controversial part. But what it is saying is that we do have contact information for national members. National members have, by virtue of giving their contact information to national, consented to having their information used for legitimate party activities. This is a legitimate special convention. I think Beth Vest also threw a fit about personal information being given out It's for a legitimate party function. The LNC could alternatively have agreed to mail out the notice itself so that information really did not have to change hands. And where it says um, resident libertarian, libertarians write the National Party and ask to be kept up to date with legitimate party activities. This is what this is about. There's no violation of privacy here. Okay, and it has absolutely nothing to do with the CRM. Number four, and uh, that the LNC recognize the results of this legitimate convention. And number five, in the event that the board of LAMA doesn't do the right thing, since the what the board is doing right now is taking advantage 
of a truce flag, basically. There's a six-month white flag that is raised prior to any convention where an affiliate cannot be disaffiliated. That time frame needs to be shortened considerably. It has never changed in 50 years. The reason why it used to be six months is things used to move much more slowly. But in the digital age, six months is far too long. I think it should be two months, to be honest with you. Because it's one month before the convention that you send in your credentialed delegates. Maybe three months. Six months is far too long, and these bad actors are taking advantage of this. So this LNC is saying, these are some bad actors, number five. This is what number five would say. These are some bad actors. We wish we could kick their ass. But our bylaws don't allow us to kick their ass right now. But you want to know when their ass can be kicked? Immediately after the closing gavel of the next convention where there'll be a new LNC. So we are recommending to the next LNC as soon as practicable to take up this matter and kick their ass. That's what these five things are saying in English and not in Roberts. This is justice. Now let's go back to where I was and I'll take a look at some comments because it's pretty shitty if I encourage comments and then don't read them. But I need a drink after that. I need a drink and a cigarette because parliamentary procedure just makes me hot and bothered. All right, let's take a look at some of these comments. God, getting old sucks. Put glasses on, take glasses off, put glasses on, take glasses off. Nope need them off like where my screens are is right in the cusp of can't tell if it's better with glasses on or glasses off better with glasses on okay so justin says i feel bad for people on the crm it's pretty awful and inflexible um and there's some top-down issues let me tell you something about that let me put this up on the screen justin because i think this is a very important um discussion point when I ran this time for the LNC, I was a huge supporter of the CRM. In theory, I still am. Notice I have a qualifier now. Because now seeing that National can just seize control, it has made us a top-down organization. There needs to be an easy way for the states, and maybe there is. I'm not an IT person. I know that along as, as long... As long as Ken Molman is there, no state will ever lose their data because he will defy the LNC and give any state that's denied their data their data back. At least that's the promise he's made to the Colorado. We have a backup copy of our own data. If the LNC should decide it's going to bend us over, we have our own data. We could go put it into Nation Builder or something else. The good thing about the CRM is for the smaller states that couldn't afford something like Nation Builder. They were keeping their data on spreadsheets. And a political party lives and dies on data. I mean, you need a central clearinghouse of data. It's just that you can't also have a corrupt LNC. I've moved more and more towards the idea that Colorado should get off the CRM. The only reason we are staying on it, well, there's two reasons. One of them more important than the other. The most important reason we are staying on the CRM, and these two reasons have flipped. The, the second most important used to be the most important. But right now, the most important reason we stay on the CRM is because I don't want us to spend $4,000 a year on Nation Builder. We're fortunate that we're a bigger state that can afford to do that. Smaller states don't have that opportunity. The second reason is I do think as an affiliate, in confederation with the other affiliates, that it is part of our duty to have a national database. I mean, that's what makes a political party. That used to be my number one reason, this sense of duty. But because the LNC is so fucking corrupt, now it's just sheer mercenary. Like, I don't want us to spend $4,000. But I'm getting to the point where, fuck it, I think there's better products out there. It's great that it's free, but they also say you get what you pay for. Okay, I'm going to do another show on this, but you want to know what National wants to do now? I alerted Nolan to this. All you people suspicious of National. Okay, if you're drinking something right now, swallow first. 
because I do not want to ruin your monitors. You want to know what national? This is what they're offering us now. This is what they want to offer you for free. You want to hear? National wants to control your emails next. Imagine if National controlled New Hampshire's emails too. They could just flip switches and give affiliates to whoever they wanted. I, when it was brought to us, should we go with National rather than paying for email? I said, over my fucking dead body. Right now, before it was a non-argument because we happened to be one of the lucky people who were grandfathered in on the G Suite Professional, which was supposed to be forever free, but you know how Google is. All of a sudden, the forever free became expires in April. So we're going to have to start paying for our emails. So now, all of a sudden, we're getting pressured, and I'm not going to say by who, and it's not by anyone you would think. It's not by anybody corrupt. It's by well-meaning people. We're being pressured into going to this free option. No freaking way. No. I won't use it. I won't use it. LPCO starts using national email, I won't use it. And then they can remove me if they want to. I won't use it. I'll use my personal email address because I'm not having my emails yanked out from under me. Now, like even with national, with me getting unjustly removed, you know how many historical committee emails and stuff I had at the secretary at lp.org email address that the secretary you would think would have been courteous enough to see in the inbox and forward to me but hasn't I've gotten one forward and I know he's gotten a shit ton of other emails that were addressed to me and when I was unceremoniously disconnected not even given a chance to retrieve my historical committee stuff there was probably 30 emails in there that should have been forwarded to me as chair of the historical committee and they never were Mm -mm. never again never ever again so if national comes a knocking remember that's a carrot but there's a stick at the other end of that carrot don't ever give national your emails ever And Dirt Floor Garage says leaving the CRM was a great move for New Hampshire. I recommend ev- leaving f- to every other state. Colorado's not there yet, buddy, but we might be. And yeah, Cam, I don't know who voted for Beth Vest to be on the LNC. No freaking idea. And let me tell you, the, the LPNH website is much better. Because guess what? Okay, you guys kindly in New Hampshire gave us permission to use the Biden fascist billboard image. No billboard company in Colorado will run it. Can you believe that? We got rejected. So we can't use that billboard. We got a different calmer billboard, I'd suppose you would say, approved. Super disappointed. But when we were thinking about using that, we got went national to see if we could have a nice little slider like you have on your site. You know, that little slider that says seen our billboard or a splash page. Guess what? We were told that's not supported. Splash pages are like website 101. What good? I don't care if it's a free website. If you can't even have a freaking splash page, a splash page is one of the best ways to gather data or to alert people to call to actions. All of the websites now, of all the affiliates are on national, it looks like tracked housing. They all look identical. It's the all, it's, listen, it's not even that they're ugly sites, but when you see one after another after another, it starts to turn into just ugly manufactured tracked housing. It all looks alike. It's all the same template. I can't stand it anymore. And it doesn't even come with a free set of Ginsu Knights, Mike. Yes, Nolan does have a sweet beard. Is that you, Nolan? Is that you, Nolan, saying how handsome you are? 
No, Cam Anarchy, most people do not realize how corrupt this LNC is. I think a lot of people are starting to see it. In the beginning, people were, were when they saw me posting, were, oh, she's just ass mad. And I'm not going to lie, I'm ass mad. Like, I'm definitely ass mad, but I'm also right. They've, 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 listen, I thought they were corrupt when they removed me. They've gotten worse. Like, they're overachievers at being corrupt. Justin says, um, make an email specific to party business. That's what I meant. I used the word personal loosely. I meant an email address I own. And Greg says, we've embraced, embraced Civi CRM because it's better than, I never even heard of wild apricot that we used to use and it syncs up the, the info. We Our info was syncing up great with Nation Builder. It was just expensive. But at least we controlled our own website and our own data. The bylaws need to be changed before states are going to feel comfortable with the CRM. Um, Greg, uh, Dustin is running again, and I love Dustin Nanaconda. Um, Jared Hall is god-awful. Dustin is great. And he is running again. And Jared couldn't beat him, so you, don't, you have nothing to worry about. I just hope Jared is an alternate again. Greg, why don't you run as alternate? If nobody else is, I don't know who else is running as alternate, so I'm talking out my ass. I just don't want it to be Jared because Jared is the king of the insulting members through subtweets. Like, he would constantly get on his page, and this is supposed to be against the policy manual, Mr. Hall. He will get on his page and just subtweet about member emails like, oh, if you expect anyone to listen to you, perhaps you shouldn't just copy and paste the same. You know, he did this so much that it, like, it was a running joke in the LNC, his stupid little subtweets complaining about members. If you hate the members that much, Jared Hall, don't represent them. If you've been asked, Greg, I think you'd do well. I don't know too much about what's going on with Region 3, but Dustin Nana, I love me some Dustin Nana. I don't agree with every vote of his. There's a vote we're going to start to discuss I don't agree with, but I love Dustin. He's principled. All righty. Yeah, and um, Ken Mullman is not rerunning. I heard he's running for the JC, though. So there's the background. We went through the chat. So that is the motion that was supposed to be heard on February 6th. That's a great motion. It dealt with the issues of justice. And of course, the I don't want to say all of the corrupt 11, because on these various affiliate issues, depending upon who's friends with who, this is why I say it all depends upon principle. Aaron is good friends with one of the expelled members in Massachusetts. So all of a sudden, Aaron is on the right side of this issue. If she wasn't good friends with one of them, who knows where she would be. Susan, because it's not her region anymore, all of a sudden is just saying stupid shit. She's on the right side of the issue we're going to talk about today, but for the wrong reasons. They did cancel it already. It's canceled already. The meeting this weekend is canceled. The corrupt had their way. And this is what we're getting to. So we had this great motion that was going to be heard. Win it or lose it, it would have been heard. You want to know why the LNC didn't want it to be heard? Yeah, I'm speculating on motives here, John Phillips. Bite me. They didn't want it to be heard because they didn't want to pass it, which is what they should have done. And if they didn't pass it, they know they would have gotten appealed. They are already the most appealed LNC in the history of this party. And they're scared. And 
Here's where I'm going to criticize Ken Mullen a little, though I like him. He wanted, he didn't vote to cancel, but he's saying, well, maybe we should postpone it because we don't know what the decision's going to be in Delaware and that will guide us. Well, are you admitting then perhaps you guys fucked up Delaware? If you're so sure of yourselves, it shouldn't matter. You should be confident that the JC is going to come down. Now, I know this is a wild card JC, but seriously, what the JC does or doesn't do should have no effect unless you guys are second guessing your own decisions. You should be, but you're, most of you are too dumb to do that. It should have no bearing on it. And just because you guys fumbled Delaware, that shouldn't mean that the 47 expelled members of Massachusetts should have to await justice because you guys are a bunch of screw-ups. So, how did we get to the point where this motion... I mean, this hearing in which that motion would have been heard got canceled. Now we know the usual suspects wanted to cancel it. Valerie Sarwark, Laura Epke, Whitney already declared she wouldn't be there because they knew she would have a chair pro, they wanted a chair pro tem to chair it since she was so biased the last time. The usual suspects. They were all falling over themselves to cancel it. But they couldn't cancel it and save face because they knew, like, oh, my God, like, we can't just not do anything. So along comes Aaron Adams. Now, I want to make this clear. What Aaron did, she did not do in bad faith. Believe me, I do not hesitate to say when I think somebody did something in bad faith. But equally so, I'm just as quick to say that when I believe people's motives are pure, even if the results are terrible. Aaron Adams' motives in bringing this motion were pure. She's wrong, but her motives are pure. I want to make that abundantly clear. Because she has a good friend who's part of the expelled 47. She would never purposely harm them. Even if it's not for principled reasons, she just wouldn't. She has a very dear friend there. So Aaron, rather than waiting till after this meeting to see if anything that they actually really wanted and she never consulted with them, and that is her bad, rather than waiting till after the meeting, she puts a motion on the email list. And this is the motion that I'm pyrotechnically opposed to. I'm so pyrotechnically opposed to it that I put motion twice in the graphic by accident likely story. I just fucked up, but that's what we'll say. I was so upset. I put motion, motion. So let's take a look at this motion and let's take a look at the justifications for it. And let me explain why I think it's wrong, both on a parliamentary level and other parliamentarians disagree with me and I will sleep like a baby and, um, on a libertarian sense. So, here is the motion. Oh, and by the way, what the fuck? Hold on one second here. Nice straight comma there, secretary. It's just his shit is so sloppy. I know it sounds like I'm just nitpicking, and I am nitpicking about a stray comma at the end there of the sponsors with Nikayla, but all of his work is like that. Like, none of his work is proofread, and I'm not going to say I never had stray commas and stuff like that, but not every single thing I put out wasn't full of just crap. It's just a terrible secretary. Anyway. Sorry, that, that, that stray comma right there was just bugging the hell out of me. Oh, you guys aren't looking at the same thing I am. Hold on. Let me pull up the, the motion here. Here we go. And you'll be able to, it's this right here, this, this stray comma here. Yeah, I am being picky, but it's like in all of his work is like that. It's always just sloppy. Okay. Anyway, let me get over it. And it has, here's the motion. And this was put forth by Adam, Aaron Adams in good faith, but this is one of those examples that good intentions pave the way to hell. We're on to the motion, motion, baby. 
Whereas leaders of the Libertarian Association of Massachusetts, we're just going to say LAMA, and the Libertarian Party of Delaware disenfranchise political opponents primarily for internal political reasons rather than individual behavior warranting discipline, depriving such individuals of their rights to participate and vote on party affairs and, I mean, what she said there was beautiful. Whereas there is serious doubt that officers and delegates to be chosen by such affiliates will be legitimately selected and representative of the representative affiliates that should be S superior S apostrophe. That's not his fault. That's the way Aaron wrote it. Um, entire membership. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Libertarian National Committee hereby instructs its appointees to the Credentials Committee of the 2022 National Convention to vote to omit from the report of the initial credentialed list of delegates those individuals sent by the aforementioned affiliates and report the disputes to the convention so that the remaining body of uncontested convention delegates can decide whether and whom to seat from each respective affiliate and further. Ooh, this motion is worse than I thought it was. I mean, it doesn't bother me. Like, it doesn't disadvantage the side I'm more sympathetic to, but JJ probably just saw what this motion just did. Anyone, anyone just notice what this motion just did? And further, resolved that the LNC Executive Committee is hereby empowered to rescind some or all of this motion in the event that the aforementioned affiliates timely restore the membership rights of those who were disenfranchised. If there's L any LNC members... Um, reading this, you're not going to want to vote yes for this. If you there, there's something that you're voting for that you don't even realize you're voting for. Reading it out loud made me see it. Okay, let's do let's do uh, let's go back to where I was on the um, put let, roll that beautiful bean footage. Okay, all right. So basically. Let's do the background. I like giving the background because a lot of you guys don't know it. The Credentials Committee is comprised of 10 members. Five of them, one each, are appointed by the states with the top five national memberships. I think that's Florida, California, Texas. Who are the rest of the five? Virginia and Michigan? No, Michigan? I don't know. It's some, No, New York. New York's one of them. New York and Virginia, I think. I think it's... Um, you're not seeing it, Mike. You'll, when, when I point it out, you'll go, oh, 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 okay. Um, so yeah, New York, Texas, California, Florida, and Virginia. I think those are the five. And then the LNC appoints the other five to, for a total of 10. So what this motion is doing, it's instructing the five people who are appointed by the LNC to the credentials committee to vote a certain way. Now there's something else, JJ. Maybe I'm making something up. There's something else. We'll bring it back up because maybe I'm making something up. I don't think Ohio's top five anymore, Libertarians Against Lynching. I think Virginia's ahead of Ohio. It is Ohio, not Virginia? Okay. But y'all get the idea. Um, those states are innocent of all of this. Um... So they're telling the five LNC credentialing committee members to vote a certain way. This is bad. I do not believe it's allowed. Richard Brown disagrees with me, and I think JJ disagrees with me up to a point. I think JJ agrees with me a little bit more than Richard, but I think uh, the three parliament you've got three parliamentarians in the room, and we have three different opinions. Though JJ is probably the one that's right because he's the one who's been doing it longer, and his credentials are bigger than ours. <laughs> so, first thing you need to know is that the credentials committee is not a subcommittee of the LNC. It's a committee of the convention. It's accountable to the convention delegates, and it reports to the convention. Never, as far as I know, now I haven't read every bit of party history, but never in the history of this party that I know has the LNC 
ever instructed one of its appointees to a committee of the convention to vote a certain way. Let's pretend this isn't the credentials committee. Oh, Libertarians Against Lynching. The website hasn't been updated since September because they got, they, uh, you know, because you want to know who's supposed to do that? The secretary. And the secretary, quote unquote, is just so good, isn't he? The minutes from September, the minutes haven't been updated on the website since September. John Wilford is a terrible, terrible secretary. I'm sorry. He's a sweetheart. He's a cutie pie. I would love to have drinks with him, but he's a terrible secretary. (laughs) And I agree with JJ that the, we're going to get into the, whether the LNC could encourage them, but that's not the motion on the table. The motion on the table is to instruct them, not to encourage them. We're going to get to encourage because that does come in later. I think this is so completely improper, like hideously improper, like pyrotechnically improper. As I said, imagine if you will, Pretend like I'm Rod Serling. Imagine, if you will. We have a bylaws committee. You don't have to imagine this. This part's true. Our bylaws committee comprises 10 people. They are all appointed by the LNC. Can you imagine if the LNC told all 10 members of the bylaws committee that they had to pass certain proposals that benefited the LNC? Would you think that's okay? If you wouldn't think that's okay, you should vote no on this motion, no matter what you think about Massachusetts and Delaware. Otherwise, you are not fucking principled. And no, it's not okay. And I'm going to give a lot of kudos to Richard Longstreth here, who I never give kudos to because he's a genuinely awful person who hates being mentioned on my YouTube videos, which means I'm just going to keep mentioning him on my YouTube videos. Um, He's right here. He's right on this. And you want to know, he said it more politely than I would have. He said, he basically had said, I'm on the bylaws committee. Make my day. Tell me how to vote. Tell me how to vote. And I say the same thing on platform committee. Though I'm chair of the platform committee, I'm not voting at all. But let's just pretend that I was not the chair of the platform committee. was just a regular LNC appointee. If they told me how I had to vote, I would be inviting them to do something with something that Nolan is sending me in the mail. It's completely and utterly improper. They are not committees of the LNC. Now, I want to look at the citations that both um, Richard Brown and Aaron Adams used in justifying why they believed their motion is in order. Now, at first... Whitney ruled it out of order. And again, I was like, finally, a decision of Whitney I agree with. It would have been the first. Because I haven't agreed with a damn thing she's done this whole term. Then she over, then she reversed herself. And I'm like, damn it, I wanted to agree with you for once, woman. And then she reversed herself. So she's back to having a, a complete, like, zero score with me. An instruction that is not binding is not an instruction. I know we might be arguing semantics here, but I want to tell you that Ken Molman, Ken Molman's been terrible in this discussion. I like him, but we're going to go over what he said. I'll prove to you. Ken Molman said, and if they don't follow our instructions, we could just remove them. That sounds like a threat. 
To me, instructing somebody to do something that's not binding, you might as well just sit around and jerk each other off. We had things like this happen in Colorado where we felt the board who appointed certain members to our bylaws committee had its sticky little fingers way too far in it. And I agree with Richard Brown. A request is not binding, but an instruction is binding. I To say, oh, we can instruct them, but it's not binding, that's nonsensical to me. That's like saying, oh, you can fly, but, you know, gravity will pull you to the ground and you'll die. Like, it's nonsensical. The intent of this motion is to be binding. I know Whitney said it's not binding, but then it's nonsensical. They misel again, just sit in a circle and jerk each other off. All this has motivated me to do is to work tirelessly for as many years as it takes to make sure that the LNC doesn't appoint anyone to any of these committees. In 50 years, this has never happened that I know about. And I know, JJ, they can just remove them. Doesn't mean they should. And the threat was, we're going to remove them for not following our instructions. And that is corrupt. That is absolutely, absolutely corrupt. So let's look at these citations. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to get them. I know JJ wanted to get to the citations. This is like porn for us. You guys are seeing me, JJ, and Richard engage in some consensual porn here. Okay, so, oh, and I want to complain about something else. While, while I'm bitching, let me bitch about something else. Whitney has decided to instruct the members of the LNC that they're not allowed to debate in the voting thread. This has been asked and answered and settled so many times, but I know Whitney thinks she's the arbiter of what is the custom. Remember when we told her something was custom, she says it's not my custom, as if she's the arbiter of custom. No, we've always debated in the voting thread, and in fact, the policy manual says that the only spot that debate is not allowed is in the very is, is in the ballot. So the very first opening post. It says the opening ballot. It actually uses that language. So when the secretary, or in this case, the secretary with his stray commas posts the ballot, he is not allowed to include arguments for or against. But after that, oh, Mike, you're in the porn too. I'm sorry. I've been drinking a little bit. Mike wants us to know that, you know, he's got it out for Harambe too. Just so you know. Um, yeah, that's the only spot there can't be a debate is in the initial post where the ballot is. Whitney cannot tell people that they can't debate in the thread. And when you separate the debate from the votes, people aren't held accountable. That's why people want to do this. I wouldn't, I wouldn't obey that instruction. I'd say make a policy manual amendment because we've always debated in the threads we always have and the policy manual says the it says the only spot that debate is not allowed is in this very first post so now i got to go to a different thread so let's look how i think there is some debate in this thread but there is they didn't even obey her um but let's uh let's go through this thread because i think the citations are said in this thread Forty-four. Wow. Okay. Joshua Smith voted yes. Joshua, you're wrong. I'm sorry. I love you, man, but you're wrong. This motion, if it's voted down, could always be brought back up, which is what you should do. You should be fighting for your February 6th meeting. Of course, Aaron voted yes. Richard Longstreth is right here. He says, I vote no in absence of the ruling of the chair if this is an order and a separate thread because they're separating everything out so nobody could ever follow this unless you're obsessed like me. He, um, uh, he uh, objected. He raised a point of order and said this motion is out of order for all the reasons that I had earlier said. I wish I could find it because he worded it very well, but, you know, they keep separating everything. And Richard, um, you know, is making sure everyone knows he appealed. 
and he wanted uh, to know, um, and everyone's like so freaked out. I'm not arguing. Okay, whatever. Ken Molman, he's holding his vote till they get a decision from the uh, Delaware. He doesn't want to dig into a deeper hole. You guys are already in a hole so deep, you might as well just go all the way. And here's an, uh, Whitney's initial ruling, which was correct. The LNC does not have the authority to con instruct the Credentials Committee or its members. I think she could have been a little bit more specific on that, but um, I agree with her. John Phillips, just with all his blah, 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 like he just, he talks too much. Um, I'm not really interested in what he had to say. Then Joshua appeals the ruling of the chair. I disagree entirely with Joshua here. I was trying to call him over the past few days, um, but we ended up talking about something else because it's, it's a done deal pretty much now. Now, here are the citations. Whenever people say something like this, this is where I know they're bullshitting. There are more than 20 places in R1R that says a body can give instructions to committee members that it appoints, whether it's a special committee or a standing committee created by the bylaws. Well, then name all 20 places, Aaron. Don't just say there are over 20 places and then give us three. Okay. And she says, please note that my motion would only instruct the committee members we appointed. I agree if we attempted to instruct affiliate appointed members, it would have been out of order. But the bylaws have given us partial parent assembly role for five members of this committee. We appoint them. We are not the parent committee. Not even a partial parent committee. But okay. Okay. But Richard brought up a really good point that I don't want to wait till we get to his post because it was something I hadn't considered. And once he said it, I'm like, wow, he's right. The fact that if all 10 members of the committee vote, that it requires more, he said 50% plus one, which I know all the parliamentarians in the room are groaning. It's not 50% plus one. It's more than 50%, but let's let it go. Let it go. Let it go. Okay. The fact that the things of the credential committee need to be passed by a majority and we're instructing allegedly five members of the committee, it means we effectively control what the committee does. Because unless one of those five break rank and all five of the others vote opposite, it will be a tie every single time. So this motion has, in fact, completely hijacked the Credentials Committee. The Credentials Committee, which credentials the delegates upon whom people on this very committee whose seats are up for election to be decided by the very delegates they're credentialing. Justin, isn't that a really good point that Richard made? Talk about conflict of interest. Now I know that there's, that there's no requirement to recuse yourself for conflict of interest in Roberts. But as a libertarian, in a case such as this, in a such a hotly contested convention, I do think there's a libertarian case to be made for it. All of these people have some big-ass dogs in this fight. Here are a few selected R.O.N.R. passages you may wish to review. Section 50 is on the topic of committees, and, ha and it has a lot of references to giving instructions. 5018, 5019, so let's look at this one first. I want to look it up in the actual holy book itself. 
Oh, you guys aren't seeing the email I'm reading. You don't need to. I'm reading it out loud to you. So let's go to 5019. And she quotes it. I'm going to quote it to you as well. Information, instructions, and referred papers. Upon the appointment of a committee, it is the duty of the secretary, and this is though when a committee is appointed, it doesn't deal with whether it's partial appointment, it doesn't deal with whether it was um, a bylaws committee or anything of the sort. But the section here, goes back to 5011, just in case anyone wants to go back there. It's the duty of the secretary to see that all persons appointed are notified. I want to see what she started quoting. I want to read the whole section though. And to furnish a list of the members of the committee to its chairman or in the chairman's absence to some other authorized committee member. That's not relevant here. When a subject or item of business is referred to the committee, normally at the time of its appointment, if it's a special committee or at any time, if it's a standing committee, she is confusing a credentials committee which is for a specific task for conventions with a standing committee, which is like a finance committee where anything having to do with finances gets referred to it. And I don't think that this distinction is being properly sussed out here in Roberts either, to be honest with you. So it says when a subject or item of business is referred to the committee, normally at the time of its appointment if it's a special committee which this isn't or at any time if it's a standing committee this can't be at any time it's only for credentials it's a com it's a committee of the convention it's not a standing committee it doesn't exist throughout the whole term it's not a standing committee the secretary provides the committee chairman it's a bylaws created committee but it's not a standing committee provides a committee chairman or his representative with a copies of the papers, motions, or other matter formally referred to it, and whatever instructions the assembly has given. The assembly in this case, Miss Adams, are the delegates, not the LNC. And the instructions the delegates have given it are contained in the bylaws. She's completely misunderstanding this. This is where a little knowledge gets you in trouble. Okay, that's her first citation. And she's fucking wrong. And she even highlights and whatever instructions the assembly has given it. What is the assembly in this case? Who is the assembly to which this committee reports? Not who appointed it. 5026. I want to see what part she highlighted here. All right. Committees of organized societies operate under the bylaws, the parliamentary authority, and any... This has to do with committees not being able to create their own special rules of order. And we got into this all the time um, on committees. This is what this particular section has to do with this isn't about instructing people how to vote. Like she's taking, she's yanking this out of the context that it belongs in and just trying to shoehorn instructions on how they should vote. So committees of organized societies operate under the bylaws, the parliamentary authority and any special rules of order or standing rules of the society which may be applicable to them. Notice that is the subject matter of this section. A committee may not adopt its own rules, except as authorized in the rules of the society or in instructions given to the committee by a parent assembly in a particular case. It's talking about how it operates. 
It is not talking about how instructing a committee how to vote. Like Aaron, like she just, she didn't cite this maliciously. She just doesn't know what the fuck she's talking about here. This is what happens. This is like when you pull a Bible text out of context. It's exactly like that. If a standing or special committee is so large that it can function best in the manner of a full-scale assembly, it should be instructed that the informalities and modifications of the rules of regular parliamentary procedure listed for small boards are not to apply to its proceedings. The parent assembly may adopt such instructions to the committee by majority of vote. Who is the parent assembly here? It is the delegates. Because the LNC cannot instruct, say, the platform committee, it appoints five of the members, not the other 15, that you five can operate not under the small board rules, but the other 15 have to operate under small board rules. That is absolutely fucking nonsensical. So I actually do think, by the way, that for the case of the platform committee, that the delegates should say that they don't function under committee rules. Because it takes fucking forever when you can't call the question on the platform committee. This is a totally side issue. I think right now Mike Seebeck is going amen and amen. But this is, just apply this section here to a committee of 20 people in which the LNC appoints five, where it's talking about how you can tell them not to use the procedure for small boards and see how that makes any fucking sense. It makes no sense. This section has absolutely nothing to do with this question. Then she goes to 5821 on the topic of, of conventions. And this really has absolutely nothing to do with anything. And with all due respect, Richard Brown, I think this is where you went really, really off the... I'm not allowed to say... what are all, Everything's politically incorrect now. Can I say off the farm? Out of your tree. But of course, I mean that in love. We, part, we, we, we fight like this all the time because this has to do with delegations. It doesn't have to do with committees. 5821. I mean, even the title of the section in chapter 58 is Organizing an Established Society's Convention has nothing to do with committees. For fuck's sake. So 5821, I'm going to read the whole thing. I know it says, as in the case of a committee, it's not saying that these rules apply to committees. It's making an analogy. As in the case of a committee, in the absence of a superior rule to the contrary, a constituent society or unit can, can instruct its delegation. When it controls the entire committee, it can instruct the committee that you are only to consider this question or you must report at this date and time sort of thing. It's making an analogy, although this is not always good practice in ordinary societies. I do not believe that this is saying, though I understand, I understand the argument here. I just don't think it applies. I'm not saying that anyone is crazy or unethical for thinking otherwise. I just think you're wrong. Such instructions. Now, here's where I will agree with Richard over JJ. If if they are allowed to instruct the credentials committee how to vote, it is fucking binding because the next sentence says such instructions are binding. I don't think this section applies, but if this section does apply, it's binding. Such instructions are binding upon the delegation to the extent that the convention's presiding officers and other officials who she's analogizing, this is section 5821, Mike, um, to the convention officials um, have a duty to enforce instructions of which they've been properly and officially notified. That's why Ken said we could just remove them. It says such instructions, now this is talking about delegations, for example, frequently require a delegation to take a position for or against a measure expected to come before the convention or to vote for certain candidates. As stated above, the delegates are free to vote as they see fit, except where an instruction has been given. But a society can, by instructing its delegation, bind it to vote as a unit. Guess what? Our bylaws prohibit unit voting for delegations. Look it up. If this applies, 
and you're analogizing it to committees, look it up. Our bylaws prohibit unit voting. Bind it to vote as a unit on all issues on a particular class of business or on certain matters to be uh, be um, acted on by the convention. So if this section does apply and you're analogizing a delegation to a committee, our bylaws prohibit unit voting. It prohibits unit voting on delegations, true, but this section is about delegations. And if you're going to try to say that this section on delegations is equally true for committees, then so is our bylaws prohibition against unit voting. I don't think it applies, but if it does, you can't have it both ways. Now, I'm respectively asking Richard Brown to maybe reconsider the opinion based upon the fact that our bylaws prohibit unit voting. But I don't think this applies. I do think it applies to some committees, and I know that might sound like, oh, you're trying to have it both ways. There's a difference between committees that are actual committees of the LNC and committees that are committees of the of the convention. After the LNC appoints the members, the members no longer belong to the LNC. They belong to the convention. Now, there is a weird gray area there. Can the LNC remove one of its appointees for, I don't know, they're not a libertarian anymore? Well, I think then that's almost like a resignation. I don't know. I'm trying to think of some... You don't even have to think of misconduct anymore because the LNC just likes removing people left and right. I do think an appointing body can remove its appointee. I don't think they can tell the appointee how to vote. And I think they'd have to remove them for some kind of like gross misconduct. Correct. They're not instructions to the committee. That's why this section doesn't apply. But you quoted this section, Richard, in your opinion. I don't think this section applies. I agree to you. And I don't think 5026 applies because that's dealing with special rules of order. And I don't think 5019 applies because it's talking about the instructions the assembly has given. And the assembly in this case is the delegates at convention, not the LNC. None of these three citations apply in this case. So I think it fails on Robert's grounds. And that is the opinion I would give if I were asked to give my opinion. And I give my opinion whether I'm asked to or not. But now we dealt with the parliamentary issues. I want to go back to the libertarian issues. This is just a horrible, horrible precedent. You got a corrupt LNC that now can just run amok amongst convention committees. Now, do I think that it would be out of order for the, an analogy doesn't give authority though, Richard. An analogy is an analogy. And if it's a good analogy, then the unit voting rule in our bylaws, their prohibition against it is also a good analogy to say that the LNC can't do it. You can't have it both ways. You got to pick a side. Can't be bisexual when it comes to Roberts. You got to pick a side. Fortunately, <laughs> I was just going to why do I always have to make Roberts dirty? What is it about me that I just get so turned on by Roberts that I guess got to make it all fucking pornographic? Hey, baby, I'll second that motion. I'll second that motion so hard. Okay. So now to get to parliament, to, to, to libertarian principles. This is not the power a bottom-up organization gives to the LNC. It is not the type of power that a bottom-up organization gives to the very people whose seats depend upon a lot of what the credentialing committee does. I've said this before, and I'm not going to say who agreed with me because I don't have permission to repeat this. Though I did tell Mike about it, but Mike knows not to repeat who said this either because I'm going to say it to myself. 
This party is in existential crisis. And decisions like this, not that I'm blaming anyone, people got to, I mean, any parliamentarian has to give the decision that they honestly believe. You know, consequences be damned, actually. They have to say their honest opinion. And I don't blame any parliamentarian for giving their honest opinion. But this sort of shit, all the stuff that's going on in the party right now, I'm not trying to have a self-fulfilling prophecy, but I'm in fear for this party. And I would not be surprised if we do not exist come June. I am working my ass off to avoid that outcome. That's why I am fighting these battles. Because I do think we are in mortal danger. And I think decisions like this put us one more, one step closer to destruction. I said to Mike in a private message, he didn't get the analogy because he hadn't read Watership Down. But for those of you who have read Watership Down, I've been saying this for a year now, and I feel like fucking Fiverr. I feel like Fiverr just twitching and going, danger, danger, and everyone but Hazel is laughing at me. Mike's my Hazel. That means you get to be the hero of the story, Mike, because Hazel is a badass rabbit. Fiber is a little spastic little shit, but he was right. Nobody would fucking listen to Fiverr. But you want to know what happened to those who didn't listen to Fiverr? They got buried in the fucking Warren. So, I'm going to tell you so we can fight it and so I can say I told you. I know without, when I say I know, it isn't because I've read some secret plan. And Richard, you, you really need to listen up here. Like, I, I'm not saying that in like a condescending way. If, it's, if, if, if it sounded that way, I apologize. I want you to hear my theory. I haven't read anyone's secret plan. Nobody has told me this. This is my gut. And I've got very good instincts for these things. And I think Whitney is a terrible, corrupt chair. This is the plan. There are people in this party that hate the Mises Caucus with an irrational hatred. There are people in the Mises Caucus you probably shouldn't like. There are people in every caucus you probably shouldn't like. I can think of quite a few of them in the Radical Caucus I don't like. I can think of a few of them in the Mises Caucus I don't like. Humans are going to human. There are shitty humans in every single caucus. But there are people, collectivists, with an irrational hatred of the Mises Caucus, and they will destroy this party in order to get their way. So, let's just throw some numbers out of the air. I don't have any backing for these numbers. I am making shit up right now. The plan I'm not making up. What I believe the plan is I'm not making up, but I just need to pull some numbers out of the air to have a... Um, and this is going to show you, Mike, when I'm talking right now, all of a sudden you're going to see what's wrong with Aaron's motion. So I'm going to pull some numbers out of the air. Let's say that the Mises Caucus controlled 75% of the delegates. They don't, but let's just use that number because it's an easy number for someone like me who's been drinking to work with. But it's kind of like the, the, the universe. I know this is... Uh, weird analogy but like when you see the expanding universe and it it, it 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 you know the the astrophysicists say you know is there going to be a big collapse you know we see the big bang is there going to be a big collapse it all depends upon the dark matter i know i'm really going far afield it's because the matter throughout the universe isn't evenly distributed it's in clumps that we call galaxies if the Mises Caucus controlled 75% of the delegates, they're not evenly dispersed amongst the delegations. They're clumped in certain delegations. Like, for instance, there's a lot of them in New Hampshire. 
There's a lot of them in certain states. There's some states in which they have hardly any members. So here's what I believe the plan is. The plan is to challenge every single delegation that has mostly Mises members. And Whitney will rule that all of the challenged delegations will not be able to vote on anything. Never mind not voting on their own challenge. Whitney will rule that they can't vote on any challenge, thereby giving control of the convention to the people who will elect her. That is not how it goes. Let's make up 10 states. Let's just make up five states because it'll make it easier. Let's make up the, five, the top five just because we already know who they are. Ohio, Florida, Texas, um, whatever the five were. Let's just go A, B, C, D, E. I'm drinking too much to, to, to know whatever. Okay? Those five get challenged. Let's say those five states comprise 75%, whatever. You know what I'm saying that without those five states, the Mises Caucus couldn't win a vote. They wouldn't have a majority on anything. The way it should go is when the state represented by my pinky is challenged, it can't vote on its own challenge, but it can vote until it's been excluded on the other four. But what I believe Whitney's going to rule is all five can't vote on any of the five. And that will be the hijacking of the convention. And that is improper. But I believe that is what their plan is. And that's not how it goes. A challenge delegation cannot vote on its own challenge. But it can vote on other challenges until the decision has been decided. So say you have five challenge delegations. And we're going to start voting on the thumb. The challenge to the thumb. These other four here that are challenged. They get to vote on the challenge on the thumb. Even though they themselves are challenged. And if the thumb gets lopped off. Then it can't vote. They're done with. And then you're left with four. And you keep doing it that way. But that's not the way Whitney's going to rule. There is a hijacking of our convention being planned right now. Can I prove it? No. That's what my gut is telling me. You can listen to Fiverr or you can ignore him. But I'm telling you. They'll make up a reason, Nolan. They'll make up a reason. None of that. If Whitney tries to pull that, there will need to be a motion to remove her as convention chair. Or the party's done. Because those delegations that get excluded from all of the voting will walk out. So that's an issue, Richard, you're going to need to be very ready to advise on. I'm not saying that's what Whitney's planning. This probably hasn't even entered Whitney's head. I do believe with all of my heart that that is what the, ant the people with the Mises Caucus Derangement Syndrome people are planning, and they are wrong. The only vote that the challenge delegation cannot vote on is its own challenge, until it's voted on to be excluded and then it's done. The counter to it is to follow the rules, libertarian against lynching. Because, again, if there's five challenge delegations, you don't vote on them in block. You vote on them one at a time. So when we're voting on thumb, the other four get to vote. So let's continue, let's continue reading. 
And I wrote to Aaron. I said, Aaron, I owe you the courtesy to tell you you are wrong on those citations, and I believe it's courteous to copy the chair. The last one is for delegations and not pertinent. The others are very contextually limited. 5019 is about is not about instructions how to vote, but about instructions on time frames, reporting method, and the like. It defeats the entire purpose of a committee to tell it how to vote. Just think about that for a second. Why do you appoint something to a committee? If the, if, if the assembly already knows how they want to vote, why appoint it to a committee and then tell them how to vote? Just fucking vote. Justin, I'm glad you're listening to Fiverr here. I said, that's the opposite of what a committee is. 5026 is about special rules of order, not voting. Again, completely opposite to what a committee is. I said, this is the only ruling of the chair I've ever agreed upon, but she's right. And then she goes and reverses herself. And Aaron thanks me for her feedback and says she's going to write Richard Brown. And then I said, certainly. I was polite to Aaron. Aaron and I are polite to each other when we're not like saying how terrible each other is. Um, and I respect Aaron for that. She's the only one who actually writes me back from the LNC. You know, fuck, I'm just a life member. The rest of the committee that doesn't like me. I'm not talking about the good members. I'm talking about the corrupt 11. They just, you know, whatever. So I said to Aaron, certainly, just some food for thought. Here's a thought experiment. Let's pretend the abortion plank came up for deletion as a proposal on the platform committee. Um, by the way, to my chagrin, I think it will, as it does nearly every time. Would you think it was okay for the LNC to instruct the LNC platform appointees to vote one particular way? Roberts aside, would that pass the gut test? Or what about bylaws, which is appointed entirely by the LNC? Okay, and I forwarded my input I gave to Aaron also to Richard. And here's Richard. I'm trying to find something else here. What do you mean 5924 last two sentences? Let me look at what Mike Sebeck's referring to. But I can tell you before I even look at citations here, um, Roberts be damned, this goes against the libertarian principles. I do think Roberts is on my side. But even if it wasn't, libertarian principles are more important to me. But I think Roberts is on my side here. But I'm just putting my cards on the table here. I'm a libertarian first. Oh, um, 5924, you weren't talking to me, Mike. You were talking to somebody about how credentials work. Okay. Um, Whitney overrules herself. Valerie raises a point of order that I don't think has anything to do with anything. So I'm not even going over it. She's going on about the autonomy of the affiliate. I don't think that has anything to do with that. Okay, and I'm still, Tim Hagen voted no. Oh, it backs up your fingers and thumb example. Okay, thank you, Mike. Um, Susan Hogarth is against the motion, but for all the wrong reasons. And let's see what Ken said. Now, Ken... Now, Ken is making an argument that actually goes against himself. Here's what Ken says. From a parliamentary perspective, I believe we could go so far as to even ask the members this body has appointed to tell us what they intend to do. And as a body, we could have a motion to rescind their appointment if, they don't, if we don't like their answer. 
I'm not saying they can't do that. I am saying that is fucking frightening and unlibertarian. It says, in 2020, it took us a long time to get to what everyone wanted to occur. Yeah, because the LNC overstepped its bounds. And Ken, what you are suggesting is that the LNC overstep its bounds again. This is paternalism. It says, poor communication, ramped up rhetoric. No, it was good rhetoric, actually. Caused fear. No. Caused disgust for LNC overreach to overcome rationality. I'm sorry, Ken, like you're completely insulting me here and that's okay. We've insulted each other before. I still love you, but this had nothing to do with rationality. It had to do with keeping the LNC in its place. And that's the most rational act a person can do. Once someone uh, finally rammed us through the gates of fear, it wasn't fear, Ken. Actually, I think, Ken, not that I care. I'm not one to cry about decorum. I do think your comments here are completely outside of decorum because you are imputing a motive to delegates that you have no way of knowing. And I could tell you as a delegate myself, my decisions had absolutely nothing to do with fear. Our delegates overwhelmingly made the rational choice. Let's do better in 22. Yeah, let's do better and let the delegates sort it out and not have the LNC make the decision for them like you're trying to force through again. Did you learn nothing? And I wrote, I wrote Ken with this. I wasn't going to write him and I did because I was like just so. And um, Richard Longstreth ended up making the point I did. So let's now go to the internal discussion. And I want to put this up in the screen. Okay. And um, Ken's, Tim's argument is good. It's just not really what I want to cover. Um, God, how... And I told Tim, you are absolutely and utterly correct. This is horrible precedent. And I don't care what the chair says. Out of order. Imagine this. Imagine the LNC telling the entire bylaws committee to vote a certain way. After, after all, it appoints them all. And then, you know, Susan argues the right point in the wrong way but she does say let the com credentials committee do its job yes i disagree with dustin and whenever david sexton pops in all i can say is david you're not allowed to show up until Stephen nikayla doesn't know you're going to show up and then you're only supposed to show up to stab him in the back that is your eternal reward mr sexton And here's Ken Mullman. If the credentials committee presents the delegates as part of the report, then someone has to move to divide and all that jazz. Oh, dear me. You mean we have to follow procedure and let the delegates make the decision, Ken? If they provide the report with MA kept separate, it saves a step. Oh, remember what happened last time we tried to save a step? Considering it took eight hours to decide to move to a vote on moving forward with only local delegates the controversy du jour of 2020 this would skip one step and move it to the next step quickly that's what the, the lnc said in 2020 you are part of that lnc ken do i need to dig up those discussions i want i i feel like i'm living in the twilight zone here in lieu of other action and you'll see what i tell him this should help move things along to the next step to the body resolving the controversy basically this motion might save us eight hours of floor time yeah like every time you move to extend time for five minutes it takes 40 minutes to debate the fucking five minute motion all right me ken this is going to cause more waste of time because the delegates will be pissed off at the lnc overreach overreach did we learn nothing from 2020 it is not the lnc's job to paternal paternalistically quote-unquote make the delegates job easier by saving a step this is gross overreach and patronizing to all involved this is the delegates jobs let them do it and then i'm going to agree with richard here richard said and here's where 
he's going to think talk about the 50 plus one soon. I don't know. It said, it isn't for this committee to decide what to or how to skip anything. He is right. This is a distinct bylaws created committee with its own charge from the delegates. He is right. Only the delegates can instruct them who to credential through the appropriate processes. He is right. We have no authority other than appointing a portion of that body to tell them what to do or how to do it. And that comes from the delegates who accepted at our bylaws as they are at the last convention. And he is fucking absolutely right. How many times did we hear last year that the LNC was wrong for a hybrid convention because as a committee, we voted to have that happen? How many people worked hard to undo the LNC decision just to quote unquote, do it the right way? I did. The right way here is to trust the credentials committee to do their job and let the delegates debate whatever they feel is wrong. Our board should not be attempting to skip essential steps that only delegates at convention can exercise. And precedent shows the convention floor would actually spend more time potentially undoing whatever we do just to potentially redo it, wasting even more time. The argument that XYZ will save time almost always costs far more time than just letting whatever happen naturally. Richard, this is the most I don't think Richard will say another smart thing for the rest of the year because this is fucking brilliant Richard is absolutely right absolutely right I couldn't have said it better he's right on every single point here Richard Longstreth is right oh god David Sexton again go away don't you have Stephen Nicola to stab in the back and this is what I wrote to Richard. This is the argument I just privately made to Ken. This is paternalistic pap. And then Susan argues the wrong way. And here's John Phillips breaking decorum. That's funny, Susan. Well, I agree. It's not a great direction. It is far less a bad direction than involving this body in this bullshit to begin with. <gasps> Mr. Phillips, watch your mouth. We should never have gotten involved, which many of us pointed out at the time. So at this point, hashtag sorry, not sorry, but suck it up and deal with the situation you helped create. Mr. Phillips, Mr. Phillips decorum, dear sir, go fuck yourself. Nothing he said here ever. I mean, what he said here is worse than I ever was on the list. But it's okay because he's one of the popular kids. They're such fucking hypocrites. And and here I, of course, I write the LNC all day long. They thought they got rid of hearing from me. They hear from me more now. Here's me writing to the chair and the vice chair. Decorum violation. You guys would never be inconsistent, would you? I think we all know the answer here. And then Aaron quotes Richard's opinion. And here's where Richard makes another excellent point. I believe Mr. Brown point. I see Mr. Brown's points, but argue that 50% of the committee is instructed and it takes 50% plus one. Parliamentarians, just let it go. Let it go. We all know it's not 50%. Just let it go. All this proves is that Richard is not a parliamentarian, even though he claims to be one half of the time. Do something on the committee. We are effectively telling the committee what to do, which he says isn't allowed. We also appoint some bylaws committee and platform committee members. I don't think there would be any debate about whether it was proper or not for us to tell them what to do. I will flat out do the opposite of this group if it tells me how to vote on any bylaws proposal because I am serving the delegates in that role, not the LNC, and I join with Richard Longstreth in this as a platform appointee. The credentials body is not subsi su subsidiary to this one in any way, whether allowed or not. And he, now he's making the libertarian argument and I agree with him. It isn't proper because of the majority stat. Well, he's arguing in a different way, but I still agree with him because of the majority status our appointed members hold versus what each state can do individually to counter our instruction is impossible unless all other groups unify and only then can it be done by causing a tie. I'm not arguing this point of order further. 
And then Ken just does the throw his hands up in the air. I'm really, really disappointed in Ken in this whole discussion. Doesn't mean I don't love him. Doesn't mean that I don't wish he was running for vice chair again. It doesn't mean that I don't hope that Whitney Bilyeu was removed as convention chair and Ken Mullen put in her place. I do wish all of those things. But I think Ken is fucking up badly here. And then Susan just blah, 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 blah. She's going the wrong way. She's arguing the right way. She's arguing the right point in the wrong way. Especially this last sentence. This makes it look like we're taking a side in the matter isn't a good idea. You mean taking the side of right? Susan's doing the both sides, both sides. You two can can go do something with what Nolan is going to send me in the mail. This is just ridiculous. And apparently there's some more emails going on here. Okay, Jared. Oh my God, my favorite person. Bump for Mr. Flores. Okay, because Lucini um, ceded his vote to Flores. Okay. Discussion. (laughs) Alex voted on the wrong thread. Let's see if our secretary knows that you really, when they vote on the wrong thread, you're supposed to, in good faith, just copy what they said on the wrong thread, put it on the right thread, and don't make them go through the practice. But thank you, Alex is voting no. Members of the LNC, Mr. Lucini has informed me that he's deferring Region 1's vote to me on the matter. After discussion, oh, go figure. Alex is actually discussing things with the Region 1 chairs, unlike Mr. Lucini. Unless something drastically changes, I'm inclined to vote no. Okay, he didn't give an actual vote yet. The chairs who have spoken so far about this issue feel that way. It is not within our authority to instruct another committee how they should vote, even if we appointed members to that committee. That would be like Alaska or another state instructing its credentialing appointee on how to vote. And I think it would be just as improper, to be honest with you. The Credentials Committee is a bylaws-created committee with its instructions prescribed in our bylaws. It is not a subcommittee of the LNC and, as such, is not subject to our oversight. They are accountable to the General Assembly of Delegates and no one else. He is right. I understand the intention here in trying to avoid obstructions to the progression of business on the floor, but as Mr. Longstreth pointed out, the LNC's attempts at such efforts last year only resulted in the delegation body overturning what the LNC did, let me put it in a more colloquial way, only resulted in the delegates bitch-slapping the LNC as they should have, only to re-implement it later. When it's clear that neither side of this conflict aims to remedy the situation and is digging their heels in for a fight, LNC action will only add fuel to the fire we're trying to quell. I disagree with him there. That's not why you vote against it. The LNC should be taking a side, but not in this way. This is not the right way to do it. So I, I disagree with his final sentence there. Okay. And Jared saying he'll vote, vote the bump the voting thread. Ah, Mr. Nikayla's daughter was born, so I guess David Sexton did show up in time to stab Nikayla in the back when he knew Nikayla couldn't be there. <laughs> Nik- Sexton always seems to show up when Nikayla can't can't counteract him. Okay. Benedict Sexton. Okay, so now you guys see why I am pyrotechnically opposed to this motion. I love the results. I don't think the delegations from Will McVeigh and whoever the new chair of the drama llama is should be seated. But that's for the delegates to decide. It's not to set the precedent of the LNC instructing the Credentials Committee. This is what I fear, Libertarian Against Lynching. This is why I think the party's in mortal danger. He said, understood that hypothetical Chair Bill Yu's action would violate ROR. but what if Chair Bill Yu's response, perhaps supported by a critical cathedral caucus masses, Make me. You want to know what I think the what if is? I think the people that she says make me to are going to go fangu and walk out. 
That's what I think is going to happen. And I think that will destroy the party. And I do not want to see that happen. Which is why I am begging Richard Brown to give Whitney Bill U. wise counsel. And for the people who would ordinarily walk out, you know, maybe we need to have our, we, I don't know whose side I would be on because I don't know what's going to happen, but I would certainly be on the side of the people if she made a ruling like that. Go out in the parking lot and have your own convention. I don't really know. I don't want any of that to happen. I want us to have a convention. I want us to have a party. And I say that no matter who is elected. I am really, really worried. And if I didn't care about this party, if I was like just an agent of chaos, I'd be, I'd be like doing this, but I am scared. I'm scared for the future of this party. I'll have to research the 1983 National Convention, Greg. I'm not familiar. Maybe you can send me some information on that. You know what I'm just noticing? Um, <laughs> you guys tell me if you're noticing this too. This sweater is making my eyes look green as fuck. Is it just my screen? Or is this sweater like bringing out the emerald in my eyes? Because I do have green eyes. But depending upon what I'm wearing, they don't always look green. Sometimes they look almost like a pale blue or a kind of blue. But this sweater, I keep looking in my monitor going, damn, my eyes look fucking green as hell right now with this sweater. Tell me if anyone else sees that. Okay, so let me go look at the comments because it seems like JJ was giving us some good information. Okay. Okay. So Mike says, yeah, they're freaking me out. Like my own eyes are freaking me out and how green they look with this freaking sweater. All right. Going way, way back. All right. Libertarian against lynching. We're just going to call you Lal. <laughs> Lal says, what's an objecting delegate to do? JJ says, um, her decision could be appealed from the floor. Nolan talks about how the big balls on New Hampshire women. Um, I've got, I'm not from New Hampshire. I got pretty big balls. Uh, it's not out of order to appeal from the ruling of the chair. He's Mike is correct. And yeah, Lal says, what if her response is, what you going to do about it? <sighs> See, that's the thing here. You've got one group of people who've been trying to follow the rules. You might not like the results, but they've been trying to follow the rules. The quote unquote takeover has been by winning at convention. And what's the other side been doing? Cheating. Ryan Brown goes, Richard is right. Who hurt you? Um, I think you're just seeing what I hope is a consistent part of my character that whether somebody's right or wrong does not depend upon whether I like them or not. Richard is absolutely right here. And he's not only right, he's like right in a big way. And he's not only right in a big way, he wrote it beautifully. Like there's sometimes people are right, but they write it like in a kind of a shitty way. Richard today is the Richard I used to know. The Richard that used to serve in, in, in Colorado. He's very, very right here. He's the only one making sense. Richard Brown was correct. It was LNC overreach that fucked up part two of the convention. Absolutely. The, the LNC got bitch slapped. They're lucky they didn't get censured. I wish they did. Lau asks, is Aaron Starr supporting Angela McArdle? I have no idea. Um, I asked JJ this, Nolan, if we could settle this in trial by combat. And he said we could, but it would, 
<laughs> he did. JJ, did I not ask you that the other day? Did I not ask you? you? You think it was just me being weird. Libertarians have a fetish for trial by combat. I don't know why, but we want to bring back dueling so bad. <laughs> Consensual violence is okay. And uh, JJ pretty much said, well, Roberts doesn't prohibit it as long as the body votes by a majority vote that you can settle it that way. And it doesn't violate the non-aggression principle in your case. I would love to suspend the rules of decorum. Every motion must mention a dildo. <laughs> one free vote if it's a barbed one. <laughs> Jess, <laughs> can't find a big enough box for that package. <laughs> That's what she said. <laughs> Wait a minute. I think I have that. Do I have that sound effect? I do. Why didn't I put that in my thing here, Richard? Uh, not Richard. Uh, Mike, hold on. Where's my sound effect? Sound effects. Hold on. Here we go. That's what she said. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we got to do that again. This is just too good. This is just too good. <laughs> I got you up on the screen there, uh, Jess. That's what she said. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's good. That's good. Okay. How do we feel about a strongly worded letter? I feel about it the same way I do about the, the guys on top of the castle on Monty Python in the search for the Holy Grail. Now go away or I shall taunt you a second time. <laughs> your mother was a hamster and your father smelled of elderberries. Ah. <sighs> I agree with you, Lal. Contingency plans probably should be held for an alternate convention, but that will be treated by the people with Mises Caucus Derangement Syndrome as us trying to, I don't know, it, it would be interpreted in bad faith. No matter what we do, it's interpreted in bad faith. Oh, I didn't know this, Greg. I, I thought that, I, I think I kind of heard about this. So Greg says, after the 1983 delegates nominated David Berglund for LP president, the Koch brothers and many others walked out and had their own convention across the street. How many of them were they, though? Was it enough to break a quorum? The type of walkout I'm talking about is enough so that there would no longer be quorum at the official convention. I would like to settle this by paintball. I'm, I'm good at paintball, man. I've got a lot of pent-up aggression. Um, chicka, wow, wow. Just because somebody said I missed Doc Sexy. I know my French accent is bad. <laughs> All of my accents are bad. That's what makes them funny. At least I think so. Okay, so. Woof. That was fun. I think we covered it all. Uh, I think I do think we covered it all. I'm waiting to see if there's other questions. Um, I don't. I need to record my radio show. What time is it? Shit! It's. Uh, I'm gonna be up late tonight because I need to do Whoopi Goldberg. Different topic. Can the LNC decline not to renew? Tara DeSisto's contract instead of terminating her employment. Would that limit legal exposure? I'm not an employ I'm not an attorney of any kind, but I'm not even an employment paralegal, so I have no idea about the legalities of it, but we have non-renewed contracts in the past, so I would guess yes, we could non-renew her contract. I don't know when it expires, but I also do think we could probably terminate her 
I think people, not during my tenure on the LNC, but in the past have been terminated, but there's like severance pay and things like that. But I'd say no matter what it costs, we need to get rid of her. Quorum is 40% of registered delegates. Yes, Mises Caucus leadership is aware of my concerns. Phillips posted this before. I have him on ignore. He posted what? I don't know what it's claimed that Phillips posted. Um, I haven't seen anything he's posted in well over a year. No, it hasn't been a year. It's been a long time, though. It's been, I, I think I blocked him in... Well, it was before June, so I blocked him in about May. No, actually, I blocked him right after our June LNC meeting, so I blocked him about June 10th. All right, so if nothing else, um, I got to get, I guess, recording. I need to eat some dinner. I hear Wayne came home upstairs. I think I am... Uh, going to be up very late tonight. And Ryan says, if quorum's 40%, could two separate conventions make quorum in a 50-50 split? This is beyond my pay grade. Um, the first, the there's a real convention, and that's the convention in Reno. They would have quorum. The other 50% would be another organization that wouldn't be an actual convention. I don't know, quite honestly. I suppose the other 50 could argue the other ones were illegitimate. I don't think either side would survive. So I don't know. And I, I, I don't want to be part of any of that. If we're talking about a walkout and a split and all that, I'm probably done. Like, I, I, I don't want anything to do with that. I've got other things I could be doing with my life. I'm here to work to keep the party intact. It says half fun making whoopee content. Um, chicka, wow, wow. <laughs> <laughs> okay, everyone. Well, I'm not playing the um well JJ has some advice there. That's JJ's pay grade. I'm just, uh, I'm a lowly, not official RP. Notice I don't even call myself an RP because I haven't gotten, because it'll take the National Association of Parliamentarians 10 years to send me my certificate. I haven't gotten it yet. I passed this test now nearly two months ago. I, <laughs> they are, I still haven't gotten my grade from the section in July. Just so you know. And they think this is reasonable. I'm going to go work with AIP to get credentialed there as well. While I'm waiting for them to grade my test from July. And I bet you I get through the entire AIP process before I finish the new RP exam for NAP. Anyone want to take bets? Is that is that organization dying, JJ? Because something's seriously wrong. When you pass a test in December, you still haven't gotten the official notification, which is why I don't use I don't use the credential because even though I know I passed the test and the lady confirmed for me on the phone that I passed the test, I haven't gotten the little piece of paper. I bet you I go through the, the AIP before um, I get finish the, the new RP. How, let's take bets. How long do you think it's going to be before they send me whatever certificate they're supposed to send me? My bet is a year. Take bets.
Nobody else thinks it's going to be less than a year. I got to research AIP, so I'll probably pick your pick your um, brain on that. I don't know as much about it. I just know that I'm not happy with NAP. I'm not happy with them at all. They make the LNC secretary look competent. July, and I still haven't gotten my grade. You know, let's look. Hold on. Maybe maybe I got it now and I just didn't get an email. Okay, we're going to share my screen. I've got, oh, it's not showing my bookmarks. Bookmarks. Bookmark manager. I think I have my, because we're just curious here. I think I have bookmarks bar. Oh, did it not sync other bookmarks? Oh, it didn't sync up. Well, damn it. I wanted to see if it would show me. Maybe I need to turn on sync. That's why. Turn on sync. Yes. How long does it take to sync? Here we go. All right. Nap test. Let's see if they've given me my grade yet. Not at Grammarly. I want the nap test. No, that's not it. Where is it? Schoolology. Okay, that's it. Let's sign in. Let's see if I got my grade yet from July. Hey, I've got some notifications. Maybe I did. January 18th, I got something. No. General instructions. And then on January 5th, nope, none of those are my grades. Those are just like instructions. So, nope, I haven't gotten my grades yet from July. Isn't that ridiculous? Didn't mean to open that up. All right, didn't mean to be opening up Wondershare, but here we go. Yep, still haven't gotten my test results from July. I'll go look what those notifications are, but I don't think they have anything to do with my tests, but they certainly weren't my grades. It, it's a very specific format when they post your grades. It's all on the Schoolology site. And the only screen I showed, so I don't get in trouble, was the notification screen that anyone can look at. It wasn't any confidential information. Okay. All right. Well, I guess that's it for this evening. JJ says, call me tonight. I can't tonight unless it's important. Is it important to call you tonight? I'm waiting for you to tell me because I got to record my Whoopi Goldberg thing. I'm an RP in the directory. I never got anything from them. <laughs> Where's the directory? So now I can start using it. Where's the directory? Show me. I want to see this in writing. <laughs> they never sent me anything. They never sent me a damn thing. I don't even know where it is on their website. I'll look it up. Send me the link maybe and I'll show everybody at some point. I'd appreciate it because I tried to find it once before. Nope, I never got anything in the mail. I never got an email. <laughs> I didn't get a carrier pigeon. <laughs> they need to get their shit together, man. Okay. <laughs> Maybe they have the LNC secretary running things. <sighs> All right, everyone, I'm going to go. I'm going to go record Whoopi. You have a good night. And um, I'm not sure what I'll be recording tomorrow. I'm thinking about it. Probably some history because I get tired of this drama bullshit. All right. Bye-bye. You got to take what you're given. That's how we live it. Don't be mad at the system. It's simply how we've existed. I hear a lot of people talking like they politicians and choose to be an accountant because it's safe in a business. Not because